I'd like to actually um, introduce Bernard Soler, all the way from France. Um, he flew back here just for this. Um, he will share with you the look, the imaging, and what kind of food that he ate when he was in Singapore. So, Bernard, please. Hi. So, I won't be as good as Anthony because I'm not used to do that, especially with all... I mean, there's a lot of people. And that's it. So, what, basically what we're going to speak about is like the, what we did with, for the cinematography, what we tried to achieve with Anthony. Uh, you know, being in Singapore, trying to replicate the 90s. Uh, yeah, this kind of stuff. And uh, all the process we went through, the testing from the most boring to the more interesting stuff, the challenges and uh, what works, what didn't work. So basically, what he said is right. Like he's trying, like within his performance, to get something very natural. And we we actually worked together before when we were in the UK because we studied together. And uh, we we shot then like three, four films, uh, three short, four short films together, and uh, always trying to get something which was, yeah, natural, but in some kind of different style every, every time. So it was his first feature, it was my first feature as well. So it was, yeah, something interesting to to try and to do together. Um, so the first phase is basically is me coming to Singapore. It's, it was my first time in Asia at all. So that was a bit weird. I was, I didn't know what to expect. So the first time he brought me over for two weeks to discover a bit the country, uh, the um, the culture, the the malls uh, that I was not really used to, uh, the food courts, the the coffee in the bag, <laughs> <laughs> which was very interesting. But uh, yeah, and I drank a lot of coffee actually during the, <laughs> the process. Um, so it was yeah. So basically, the first two weeks when I came, I spent. It, it was very busy actually casting and everything. So I was, I mostly wo walk, walked around and discovered things and met people, met people from the production team. And, you know, it's like, it was quite interesting to see, you know, to learn about HDBs, what he was looking for, even for sets, for, for everything basically. And um, I think these first two weeks were, were quite essential for me to get a sense of what was Singapore and what is Singapore now and what it was before. Because he showed me a lot of pictures, a lot of the family pictures, uh, actually. That's uh, some, like the first one he showed. And um, after I came a second time, the second time was supposed to be the shooting time. But we postponed. So during that time, actually, we shot a short film as well. Uh, because the, the feature has been postponed. And uh, actually, it was quite interesting because it was the first experience for me to shoot with him in Singapore with a Singaporean crew. Small crew, it was very low budget. Uh, it was for for Nikon, I think, if I remember. And uh, yeah, so it was a good experience. So I came back after, um, I came back home after because the shoot, the main feature shoot has been postponed. Then came back a third time a month before to start to the preparation. And basically, is what we try to do and to achieve with the film is to get the most preparation we could to be the most ready possible. Because on the time, on the you know, on the run, you don't have the time to think. You you need to know already all. You need to know everything. You need to to not to have make choices before, but you need to know what you like, what you don't like, what you feel is right. So basically, you start to do some prep with uh, some tests. So you decide to you know, which kind of camera you want to use. So, you know, I don't really know the, I, I didn't really know the industry in Singapore, so I, well, I looked around for what was available. There was a discussion with Anthony. Uh, the budget was too low to go on film. Uh, so we had to go digital, and basically for us, there was two camera really available, was the Alexa and the Red Epic. And basically, I think it's, I mean, it's maybe done to Europe, but I've been shooting with the Alexa quite a bit, and that's a camera where I really like because it feels already very natural when you, you shoot with it. 
and it's very you know it's it's kind of post ready as well so which is i mean something great and it's quick and you know uh so it's uh so basically the choice was that and both of us were really keen on shooting with this camera and i think at the time there was only one uh camera available uh in camera equip and uh and apparently he was telling me that a lot of people prefer to shoot on red because in asia red actually apparently went uh bigger than uh, the alexa or harry so the thing is i think it's yeah both of us was the first decision was for us for the alexa was because the the highlight was for me much more well handled than the red and that was a quite a big de decision because singapore is very bright can be very bright sometimes and uh, especially when you have the the sun very topish and you know you have to you don't have necessary budget to throw back some light enough lights inside the flat or you know those kind of stuff so we went through the first phase like the first six months the first time i came for normally the main shoot was just to test the camera so i did some very basic stuff like latitude tests just to see where how it reacted and stuff like that so it just yeah looked like a very boring test it looks like that so some people might recognize her uh so just like neutral then after you go you go under and to see after you go above and you look at what it is and then after you look you know inside outside because the main set we had was in the flat so we i wanted to know the reaction you know when you're near the window or you know when you have a hot spot behind and stuff like that so basically it's it was the first test and uh kind of important as well for us and be, we bring bring it back to white screen we tried it we pulled back we tried to different we tried different uh you know to to bring back some uh, under exposed shots bring back some over exposed shots where well, i think we were very keen together to use this camera that was quite good after the second thing is we tried because of a discussion we had together is like the household lights in singapore were quite different from europe for example because most because mostly because of the mixed lighting and the fluos and neon that you can have like in the i don't know in the in the bedroom sometimes in the living room or it's um i would be used to use like artificial lights tungsten light warm lights because that what that what we are used to to do in europe but here it's quite different that's something that's one of the point that anthony told me as soon as i arrived in singapore and he was really keen on showing me that actually so we were really carefully plan where which kind of lighting would be in the flat so so then when the the test of the different flows lights so you can see here there was different colors so you just try because we wanted to use normal fixture and a, a lot of props props light so it was very important for us to get the right the right one so i went to all the lighting shop i don't i don't remember where it is exactly is it beyond thompson road or is it yeah yeah so i did i basically did the whole street and i visited them for for two days to check all the references and what they get uh what they have and what we could take and everything and basically i came back with few references few samples that i tested again with the same camera to see how it's reacting then we came back to white screen and try it again and you know in post and try to grade it and see how it reacts and then i would give a references for which kind of tubes i would like to have for the shoot which was i think quite expensive for the production they were not very happy about it <laughs> uh but it was very useful because in the film we using a lot of prop lights actually much more some some of the sometimes it's just lit, lit, literally with prop lights then the third test we did I and mean, it was really long test because i think we needed to have all the answers and know where we're going i mean especially me and so we could make quick decision and that was really important so the third test was to do a real shoot in the flat so within the flat we were shooting the color of the world the color of the props the um, 
the makeup, the hair, the dressing, you know, make all that test to see if all the colors works within, you know, the if, if we believe that it looks like Singapore in the 90s. So basically we did a whole day shoot, so with the full team, uh, the production was not very happy about that either because well, it was expensive, but that was useful. And uh, so we did this shoot. We cut a scene. John cut everything for a minute, and we went to Bangkok where we graded the film, and they uh, they did the test. So this is the test we made for a minute, a minute long. So it's different shots. Yeah, it's just natural lights with some lights above her. Uh, like warm lights in the toilets, you know, just different thing. Some can look like scenes they will be in the actually in the days in the film. You can still see stands in the frame because we don't have the time to put there. Just test of like fluos to see the color of it. Yeah, so basically, just a rough test. So that was. So basically, we did. Three main tests. I mean, yeah, three main tests to to finally start to shoot. So that was that's the HDB flat where we shot. So we saw, yeah, like I said, everything the the closes, the flats, the all the colors. And after we made some decision to see what was wrong, what was working, what was not working. So we changed some of the stuff in the. Uh, within the set design, we say, we changed some of the stuff with the. You know, the hair were not totally ready yet, but uh, some of the clothes, uh, we darkened a bit the wool to make it a bit uh, a bit more, a bit less new, uh, all this kind of stuff. So basically, after the work in the flat was to give the sense of the flat in the 90s. And, um, and basically, so using props light, trying to give... I mean, being a foreigner, I mean, Anthony gave me a lot of references and I could see in his house how it was looking like in, within the different flats we actually visited to see what, which kind of lamp they're using. So we use mainly props light and sometimes some lights to, to give back a bit. But mainly it was props light. So it was quite interesting. So, I mean, that's not the right order for the picture. But for example, in the bedroom, we had like... No, let's say here, yeah. Here in the living room, so we had these lights. I mean, we saw a picture of Anthony actually using, uh, where well, we saw there were some other lights hanging above. But actually in this scene, the only light working is the prop lights. Is this, you know, this one here. Uh, that's the only one giving light. And the same here, the blue here, is, giving from, is given from a prop light that we installed with uh, the set designer. Uh, and that was it. Uh, the same here is only, you know, it's a prop light we use, the only source of light from this shot. I mean, everything is quite dark, it's not as dark in the film, but uh, I don't know, I think I, I've, uh, I didn't get the right version. And uh, basically, it's the only source giving the light, basically, for each shot. The same here, same here. Same here, same here. We were in the shop where we like, had a dresser shop, and so what we did is we installed basically props light as well, like this one here. That's that was not in the shop. That's stuff we we put in basically, and there was we put like four or five different lights, and basically switching off, switching in, depending on the shots, and uh, that was yeah, that was done. Um, here, for example, when I was talking about the tubes, that uh, we bought about a, a lot of tubes, there is a scene where there is two offices, the office of the mother, the office of the, where her father is going, and basically in the whole the office, what we did is we replace all the fluos with the tubes, actually, we decided to use. And everything was just using that. There was no other light lighting them. It was just the props light above them. And what we did is control the lights. To make you know to make, to shape it a bit more to look a bit nicer. So, for example, here as well, we we place the phone in the street and we put this light just to you know to actually to be able to see her. Uh, yeah, so that was as simple as that. And sometimes it was about controlling. What I like, like what I was saying, we used uh, 
props light, but it's more about controlling the light as well, more than just lighting, just switching on. So basically, in the living room where you see it's only the this lamp hanging above, it's just actually there was, you know, there was like uh, some diffusion inside. There was a lot of things to actually make it so it wouldn't spill everywhere, and that would still light the 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 actors. So that's actually Cindy was here today. They trying to do the. I mean, that was a nightmare. Every day we had to put it back and. You know the 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 hood uh, just melted down because of the 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 heat of the bulb was too high. I mean that was yeah that was a real pain. Yeah, so mixed lighting is the same. It's like we you know we use like the those orange light with flows light, and that was very important for the feel and the the mood of it. It's the same in the bedroom. We had like you know some prop light above with some you know it's everything is a mixture. So basically, it's it was all. Um, a discussion between Anthony, the, the set designer Michael, and me, and that was that was happening before, even during pro production. Sometimes we made quite a lot of changes. So the thing is, so shooting here was a bit of a challenge for me in a way that I never. I mean, I did it only in a, in a short film, but I could experience, like for example, the heat was. I mean, I was sweating every day like mad. I never sweat so much in my life. I never drank so much in my drink so much water in my life. And coffee. So it's basically it's it was a sh you know it was a film where we had very limited resources and very limited means in terms of money. So sometimes everything couldn't make, be done on time. So we had to make some choices sometimes, which was not always the the right one. For example, the first time we had to choose a car, which are, which was the main car of the of the of the cast, and. But we made a choice out of a picture because we didn't have the time to look at it. And on the day where we were supposed to shoot it and it arrived, that was just wrong. That was feeling wrong. I could feel it was wrong. I could see the face of Anthony and I could feel it was very wrong. <laughs> and, uh, and basically, so we decided to postpone and, re and find another car because it was not... It was not fitting at all the film, so it's 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 about that as well. What he was talking about, being very precise about what he wants, and and visually you need to be very precise if you want to give a sense of what was this area, what was this period. So we sent back the car. We had a new one. Uh, we sometimes we had to shoot, even though we didn't have any authorization because we had the time to ask for it, and or people didn't want it us to shoot. That's all. And uh, but we really wanted to shoot, so we did it, and, <laughs> and it did. It, it led us to some situation which was a bit weird. For example, like I mean, we shot in Lucky Plaza where all the Filipino maids arrive, and but it was not really legal. But I mean, kind of. That's the thing. It's like we tricked the thing by asking every shop if we could shop if we could shoot from the shop. Instead of you know because and basically we're playing cats uh, mouse and cats with the the security guards, so sometimes it would lead to you know being you know staying with a shop with ladies shopping and us stay, <laughs> I mean hiding in the shop while the security guards just go around and just waiting for them to go off. Uh, so that was in Lucky Plaza. It was uh, quite a, it was quite funny. The, the situation. It was really run and gun and without the time to think it was just like go, 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 go. It was very, you know, it's like kind of a military operation. The second situation <laughs> was very funny. It's actually quite odd because you, th you would think it would be very easy, but it's not that easy. And um, especially apparently to find a location which you like the 90s in Singapore because everything is being rebuilt and, you know, uh, every 10 years or so or something like that. And the other situation was where Anthony was very particular and I, I couldn't really, I could understand, but at the same time it was like, okay, but that's that's a very small location, but that's how precise it likes to be. is the toilets in the restaurants where literally it's one scene. It's like it's very, there's three, I think there's three or two shots. It's very small. But it was very important. So we looked for toilets, which looks like the 90s. It's, it's more, even more specific. It's toilets from a Chinese restaurant, which was looking like the 90s. <laughs> but, 
So that was difficult. And we, didn't, we never found it, except that two days before, the, because we pushed it more and more and more and more on the schedule, at, at some point we had to shoot it because we didn't have any shooting time available after. So we had to go on Ricky at night after the shoot looking for toilets. So what we did is basically, yeah. <laughs> so basically there was Anthony, his two uh, assistants, me, uh, I, you know, some interns, I don't remember who was there, but there was like with four, five, six people, five of us looking for toilets. So it's, so we were popping in like, um, I think it was, you know, we were, we would send the girls to go check the the, the girls' toilets, and we would send the boys to go check the the boys' toilets. And if we look something interesting, then everyone would come. But like one by one, and checking that everyone, <laughs> nobody is looking at us. So basically, we found two options, which was great. One option where we decide, okay, it was two days before the shoot. We decide, let's go and ask an authorization. And the second one, we're not going to ask it, so we're going to just do it uh, Gary last time. Uh, of course, we never got the authorization. Uh, <laughs> so we did Guerrilla Style, and we went there. Like I don't know, like kind of a commando. It was it's quite stressful on the day, but funny at the same time. It's like basically we would go two by two, the the camera in the in the sport bag. Uh, <laughs> I would go with my assistant Zul here, and basically we it would result that there were three cubicles. And the scene is the boy looking for his father. And the boy enters and looks for his father. The father is in the toilet. And basically, so the actors would come after, but would get ready. So there would be only me, my first assistant, or my focus puller, um, the sound engineer by himself. He was booming by himself. And the act, Anthony, his, um, his assistant was uh, staying outside just to tell us when there was a security guard coming, and, and, uh, and the actors. And basically, it was a resulting in that when, you know, when someone was coming, we were just in cubicles. <laughs> All of us, just like, I mean, I was with my assistant in one cubicle. The actor was with, uh, I think, no, the, there was a sound designer. No, the sound, the sound recordist was in one cubicle, then the actor in another one. And, and Anthony washing his hand for three hours. Uh, uh, and, uh, and, and strangely enough, the security guard really needed to go to the toilet a lot of time. So he came by at least two or three times. And every time he went into the, the handicapped toilet, which was the opposite, basically all the cubicles were occupied all the time. So for two hours, it was like that. And, 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 you know, and there was Charlotte, uh, his assistant was, you know, just uh, knocking to say someone is coming, Anthony was rushing, and everyone was rushing in the toilet. So that was, you know, it's, it's part of the funny stories of when you shoot a low budget and, you know, you still remember those kind of things. And, you know, on the moment, that's, it's not that it's not funny, but it's just like you're just a bit stressed because if you start to shoot and you can't finish it, then it's a bit annoying. But that was when we finished it, and it's in the film. Um, but we're not going to say which hotel, right? <laughs> so after, so that is, I don't, I'm not very structured in what I'm saying, but basically I'll try to give a sense of what we tried to do, what we tried to achieve, the way we did it. And, you know, it's, there was a lot of liberty in what we were doing and try to, and basically it's like every day we would be talking about it and we would be trying to make quick decisions and, like he said, we decided to make everything handheld uh, because I, f I think we felt that the the film was very but very much about something very sensitive and that's something that for us handheld would give as well. And uh, but it's not just shaky handheld all the time. It's just like different type of handheld. Sometimes the handheld would be just I'm putting my hands on the tripod, or you know it, it's only my breathing. So we like to think it's a bit settled sometimes. Um, so, yeah, so it's part of that. So imagine it was a month, I mean, 24 days and held, like this camera was 15 kilos. I lost five kilos uh, and sweating all the time. So, um, so that's, yeah, that was that. And after, after the, there was the post-production process, which was very interesting. Once the film is made, 
I mean, you have one, yeah, one thing I have to mention, which was very interesting actually, because Joan is there as well, and she's going to talk after. Is Joan was actually cutting while we were shooting, and that was actually amazing, because every day we could look at scenes and say, does it work? Does it not work? Does it work? Does it not work? How can we make it work? Do we have to reshoot something? You know, all these kind of situation to make sure. Because basically 24 days, I mean, here it looks a lot, but trust me, in Europe, everybody I say, every time I say that, everybody, are you crazy? 24 days, but that's nothing. It's, yeah, it's, it's actually, it's very, it's very quick, especially that the, the, the script was very dense. There was really a lot to shoot. And there's a lot, actually, which is not in the film right now. And uh, so that was like a, a tremendous help to do that. So just to go to post-production after the edit and everything was done, uh, the sound was done and everything, then we went, we flew to Technicolor in Bangkok to, to have the grade and to give a sense of the colors because the camera, what gives you the camera is a very, it's not raw, it's log because it's the Alexa, it's in video, but it's, uh, it gives a, a very desaturated, uh, wide range image. So basically, you need to give back the sense of what you were looking for before. So what we did is we Skype with the, the color grader, we send him references. Uh, the first day we arrived, that was completely wrong. So <laughs> we did it again, but that's normal. It's like it's, like it's a process where it's, uh, it's basically it's filmmaking. We have to constantly talk and refine everything we're trying to do. So basically, here are some, you know, some of the grading. So that's how it looks like a picture when uh, it's not graded. Um, so it's very flat. There's no real colors. So basically, after we're grading it, so it gives back a better sense of, you know, like here, it's supposed to be artificial light. It's tungsten light. Um, here, you know, I mean, you've seen the picture before. Here, it's completely... You know, you see a few colors, but it's not very colorful. That's not what you want to, to give a... You know, you, you when you grade a film and you give colors, it's to give a sense, a feeling of this period. And basically, it's... Yeah, that's that. So we came from that to that. From that to that. And what we did in the process is was like... What we had, I think we don't really see it here, but basically the, the first process we had was first we did like for four days, we did only the colors. Then uh, to make everything, sure everything was okay. So we watched the film again, all again, and um, and we agreed on everything. Then we went through a second process that we were really keen on using it was a kind of bleach bypass. So it's like bleach bypass basically densify a bit the black blown a bit the the white and gives a, a more densified picture and then what we wanted because the like you can see on on this picture i mean that's it's a very low definition picture this one but it's basically it's very the hd of the alexa is very clean and it looks very plastic even though it's nice it can look very plastic so what we wanted is to bring a bit more something a bit more organic, like we use the handheld as well, like we, you know, it was all, always very natural, so we wanted to use something organic, so we used to shoot film with Anthony, so what we wanted is to use grain, to add grain to it, so what we did is we actually um, bring back grain into the picture by scanning a stock, like a 35 mil stock that Technicolor would scan, I mean, uh, actually, has been a nightmare because Technicolor never really did that. They did it from their own, what do you say, on, for their own machine artificially. But what we wanted is, I was not really happy with the way it was looking because it was too artificial. I could feel that there was nothing, something not working very, uh, very, very well. So basically, what we did is we, so they, they, they Skype with LA. They tried to find it, but LA didn't want it to to help. Uh, Bangkok, so it was, uh, I don't know, just like uh, political uh, matters, which was a bit stupid to my, to me, but that's fine. So basically, they gave us some tricks to do it. So we scanned the, 
the the stock and after we took out the grain emulate it in the smoke and just put it back straight on the film so it's something that you need to see it moving to really understand what it means but i don't have like uh, i don't have the the moving picture so i can't really show you so basically yeah that's that and here we don't see anything because it's too dark um so what i mean just to finish what i wanted to say is basically the theme was very much uh, a collaboration. I mean, talking, I mean, there was, we were, I think, very connected, all of us, in a way that we, you know, with Anthony, well, basically, when I was doing the shoot, I was, uh, I was living in the same flat as Anthony. So even if I, <laughs> I had to close the door slowly to, you know, he was continuing talking and I was trying to close the door to go sleep, but he was, <laughs> he was continuously talking to me uh, about different stuff and I was, it was, I mean, it, that's, that's something which actually was great because we were very close and we could speak all the time about it, which was quite difficult sometimes, but good at the same time because I think we were very on the same page. And then we were very quick on the day. And then after, you know, even with Eddie, with Joan, with everyone in the team, there was something where I think everyone, you know, there was like kind of a core team where we always talking about everything. And we would you know, react on problems we got, we could get on the day because in every film you get problems anyway. Uh, whether you have money or not, you always have problems. So basically filmmaking is solving, is solving problems matter. Uh, so, so yeah, so just, it's not, I think is everything we achieved there. I think it's, it's about working together and I think that's in somehow some way we managed to do something like that so so it didn't we had some set of rules as well I think which was very important and and it's and you have to make your own rules basically to to make it work and basically Anthony, Anthony is very keen on the is more than keen actually on the on the performance of his actors so one of the thing would be to leave space to the actors to be able to work and not having like a forest of, I don't know, stands or uh, like uh, having 20 people looking at one performance when it's supposed to be, um, you know, small and intimate. So, yeah, if you, and of course we don't su always succeed in those kind of roles, but, you know, it's important, I think, to, to give yourself these kind of roles to at least try to make them and try to apply them and somehow it's going to work. So, yeah, I think it's pretty much about that. I don't have anything else really to add. Thank you, Benoit. Um, and again, we'd like to thank Air France for flying him all the way from Europe and Paris.